Good morning, this is uh, Stephen Diedrichs from uh, Taxile, your uh, local national and international accounting firm uh, based out in Hastings here in Hawke's Bay. Today on uh, Money Talks here on Radio Kidnappers, I'll be uh, sharing about uh, different businesses and money skills in our, in our business. And this really follows on from some of the uh, programs I did earlier and um, especially with a new, uh, more people going on to develop their own business. Uh, so there's some, some financial skills and some skills that um, I think it's important that they look at when looking at their financial statements, especially when you're starting out your business. But before I start, a just great, uh, lots of gratitude and thanks to um, the team here at Radio Kidnappers uh, for putting uh, the show and all the other shows uh, together and especially our sponsors as well. Um, they make us look and sound much better. <laughs> so thank you to you all. Um, yeah. So as always what I'm sharing is my experiences and some research that I've done and um, so let's just uh, get into it. Um, so when we look at our financials or just with any business um, you know, we, we look at generally people look at sales, and um, I've often heard it said that sales cures all, uh, especially when there's uh, bad uh, management or cost overruns. Uh, if the sales are normally larger, then it um, kind of hides the the problems. So, but but all this, of course, presupposes that uh, we are going to make a sale and and many more sales, and this is uh, important because in deciding. Um, what type of uh, business we want we want to be sure that um, we will be able to make sales and uh, we also need to know our market and um, and how we go about um, operating in our market and how frequently uh, we are going to make sales and our customers are going to buy from us so when looking at our business we may go okay i'm going to start a furniture business or a luxury furniture business or um, maybe uh, do something in the food industry um, one of the key things to keep in mind there is the frequency with which um, customers purchase. So, for example, if you're in a furniture business and you're selling a, a dining table, uh, people may only buy another dining table in, say, seven, ten years' time. Uh, luxury uh, furniture, you may get a turnaround there around, say, three to four years. Uh, but if you're in the food business, uh, you know, you get a turnaround there of um, once or twice a week. And there's nothing wrong with um, <coughs> with either business. It's just uh, knowing that and, and knowing uh, when your customers going to walk through your doors again. Personally, I like the f uh, the um, uh, food business because um, I, I like the same customers coming back um, at least once a month, um, uh, and that's uh, uh, yeah th for me that's a, a, a good business. But not saying the others are bad, uh, right? So. <coughs> Then uh, just uh, staying on with that and looking at uh, the New Zealand market, we, we kind of uh, generally have uh, 3.5 to 4 million active shoppers uh, in New Zealand and that, um, uh, that number doesn't take into account uh, any uh, school kids and the uh, older um, generation. Uh, they, the older generation tend to uh, shop more for um, health purposes, you know, so they'll go to the pharmacy and fill their scripts and they tend to do a lot more uh, traveling, national travel and um, once we can travel overseas they'll be doing that again. So, um, you know, depending on your market you may not, uh, you may want to exclude them fr uh, from your active uh, purchases. Uh, or active shoppers uh, uh, when you decide uh, which business is going to be um, the right for uh, the right thing for you uh, so when uh, the other thing to keep in mind especially in uh, this time of uh, COVID uh, is when we sell overseas um, uh, uh, there, there's going to be some uh, shipping issues or uh, transportation issues uh, and delays and um, so that has to be kept in mind um, and because uh, the COVID situation will, you know, it's going to be with us for, for a while and, um, uh, you know, uh, who knows how long, but let's just say for the next 12 to 24 months. So we have to keep that in mind with, um, uh, if, we, if we're importing things into the country to uh, provide to our customers or parts for our particular products. And um, one of the things we could do is, um, you know, if you can't get it on a boat, you could 
put it on, put your part um, or your products, uh, put some of them on a plane and get that flown into the country so that you can support uh, your customers. So th that obviously comes with a cost and uh, we have to look at whether you can carry that cost and uh, how that affects your uh, your brand. Keep in mind when you start at your business, um, for the people that talks about branding, uh, you don't really have a brand, you're just starting out your business, so you want to make sales. So your reputation is important. Um, so you, you want to see that you can continue to provide those uh, products to your customers. So you have to keep that, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and also it's important to keep in mind that even if you go that extra step and fly products in, uh, your customers um, they may, uh, may leave you, so you, uh, they may still leave you and purchase things uh, at a different, uh, from a different supplier. So that's not the only thing to, um, to do to keep um, your customers happy. There's, there's many other things that you have to keep in mind, uh, but, but that's a, a good thing if you can carry the cost of um, flying products into the country. So um, the other costs, the other things to keep in mind is, um, let's go back to sales again, is um, you want your sales to uh, exceed all your costs. So your costs are obviously cost of manufacturing the, the product, your cost of your overhead, um, your cost of staff, uh, and there's uh, taxes, and um, there's also money that you want to keep in the business so that you can continue developing your business. And generally, only after all of that is taken out, and then you will have a profit, um, and, and you want to make a profit there. So you should always be making a, a profit. If you're not making a profit and you don't see a uh, profit coming in the um, you know short-term future, uh, it's possibly best to um, basically close the, down the business and um, uh, you know, move on to something else or, or just go home. It's um, if you're not making a, pro a profit on it, it's going to cost you uh, lots of money. So that that is something to to keep in mind and just to continue to do the the numbers so um like you know let's just we talk a bit about about the numbers let's just say your cost of um, production overhead staff taxes keeping um uh, money in the business to develop the business is a hundred thousand dollars a year and you want to make a hundred dollars profit on a uh, on a particular product then um, you can work backwards and look at okay how many products do you need to sell so um, if you divide your hundred dollars profit that you want to make um, divide that by your hundred thousand dollar cost so you'll get a hundred dollars per product and then to cover your cost you've got to work out how much products you need to sell in that year and um, you know that would be uh, 1,000 products that uh, that you need to sell at $100 to get um, to cover uh, well to make a profit um, uh, in your particular bu uh, business. And then you can break that down further. You know, 1,000 products a year. <clears throat> it's basically 84 products um, per month, which uh, works down to three products per day. So uh, then you got to look at. Uh, are you able to do that in your business? You know, sell three products per day. Because after that, you work it out that at at hundred dollars product, um, uh, at hundred dollars profit uh, per product, you're looking at about hundred and nine thousand uh, dollars in profits for you over a twelve month period. Um, and and that's very really nice on the numbers, but you've got to look at can you make the sales in New Zealand uh, in the New Zealand uh, economy because um, that, that's important because you may have to change your your pricing or the way you do um, certain things in your business to uh, continue to make that profit or just be happier with less profit. Um, so that's something to consider. All right now, just. Um, <laughs> Well, I mentioned sales and profits, and uh, they, they're kind of different, um, and we should <coughs> follow. <coughs> excuse me. We should follow both um, sales and profit, and not just focus on one or, or over the other. And um, uh, it kind of reminds me of a quote that um, I heard from uh, Jim Rohn. He says, "Like uh, you know, your um, your, your income uh, that." Uh, makes you a living, but your profits make you a fortune. So in our in a business case, you could say your sales is your income, but your profit is where your fortune lies. So that that's just um, something to to keep in mind. But to and it's but it's important to um, stay with um, uh, with both. 
um, <coughs> and monitor both your sales and your, and your profit. And that's <coughs> in if you're having, for example, a um, in your business if you do say five activities, and um, it's important to monitor the um, sales and the costs for each activity and the profit for each activity because that will over time that will tell you which activity is more profitable than the other and then you may decide okay let's just drop one of the other activities or, or the, um, uh, the other uh, revenue streams and focus on the revenue streams that are more profitable so um, uh, that would be good uh, for your business now me per, in my business personally I've got uh, an income stream which is it's barely profitable um, however I've got a certain amount of clients that also um, we also generate uh, income in the more profitable income streams and uh, they like me to do the work that's not so profitable. So I do the work that's not so profitable for them only um, because I know it's just part of the overall service to them uh, because I uh, more than make that up in uh, the other areas which are uh, much, much uh, more profitable. So it's not a um, simple black and white, oh, this is uh, activity A, that revenue stream is not profitable, so I'll just stop that and, and focus on the others. Um, you know, in many cases, in many cases, it could be that, um, that simple, but have a look at your overall client base as well, and that will provide you some guidance. It's also uh, important to look at that when you get to um, your cash flow because you've you got to have positive cash flow all the time and because uh, a business can't operate without positive cash flow. The, now, um, the thing with uh, drilling down into your, um, your revenue streams and also drilling down into your customers, when we have times like we've just recently had a, um, you know, a lockdown for COVID reasons, and um, customers delay their payments uh, to your particular business, that does affect your cash flow. So knowing which activity is going to generate more cash flow for you, and also drilling down to which customers are going to, um, you know, they just pay straight away, or which customers you can ask for upfront payment, that helps with um, your, uh, helps your business cash flow. So, um, so again, it's important to look at both your sales and your profit and to drill down uh, in your sales where uh, which revenue streams is giving you your sales and which particular customers are giving you like the bulk of the sales. And um, I guess it goes back uh, partly to the 80-20 principle where you know 80% of your business income is going to come from 20% of your customers so it's important uh, to know that especially when you uh, when you really need cash flow um, yeah so um, the other thing that I want to move on to now is um, just uh, the balance sheet I will just touch on the balance sheet so um, most cases, people tend to look at the profit and loss and they just want to know, okay, what's my profit so that I know how much tax to uh, to pay. Um, but as we discussed before, it's important to look at other parts of the profit and loss also. Now, for me, the balance sheet is actually more important. So but I'll just a, a quick description of the two. Uh, profit and loss will tell you your position over a period of time, so 12 months. Your balance sheet gives you uh, your the position of your business or your company at a point, a particular point in time. Um, in New Zealand, that's most of the cases, that's uh, the 31st of March. That's when most people you know, look at their balance sheet. And, um, and that's done for, because uh, that's the end of the tax year. There are many businesses that um, to monthly or co uh, quarterly financial statements, but um, in general, and the people to who this is um, uh, shows aimed at, will generally look at it uh, once uh, once a year. Um, so please try and look at it more often. So uh, yeah. So with the, um, the the balance sheet, the key one of the key things in the balance sheet it shows whether the business is solvent. And this is important if you, um, especially if you're running a company, uh, because if you're um, trading while you're insolvent, uh, you're actually uh, breaching the company's act, and um, there, there may be um, uh, penalties there um, against the directors uh, of the particular company uh, if it is uh, enforced. So the, the solvency uh, test, that's um, a two-step process. We look at um, 
do you have more assets um, compared to your liabilities? So uh, um, basically, yeah, do you have more? Uh, the value of your assets is more than the uh, than you know, the debts of the company, and also, can you pay your debts um, as and when they fall due? So uh, your balance sheet will uh, tell you that, and uh, that's why that's a key thing to uh, to look at. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, so just keep keep that in mind. So just basically, uh, in your balance sheet, you'll have your assets, which will equal your equity plus uh, your liabilities. Um, so your assets are things like things like uh, you know, your cash, your stock, any plant, um, equipment, furniture, and fittings you put uh, in a business. Um, those are your uh, things that are your assets. Your uh, liabilities that would be things like um, if you have a bank overdraft, uh, creditors, any unpaid GST, and loans that you have um, to others, so um, say uh, to a bank or finance company. And with loans, I'll just focus on, on that quickly for um, for your cash flow purposes. Uh, generally, uh, say if you have a loan that's paid over a couple of years, um, that uh, it's divided between a current um, uh, a current liability and a non-current liability. So the current liability is the ones that you're going to pay off in the next 12 months and the non-current liability is everything else. Um, that's important for when you are working out your budget for the next 12 months so you know how much is going out uh, each month and um, as you know we spoke about sales before and costs but uh, your sales will definitely have to cover all of that. Um, and it's part of your costs. So it's important to understand that uh, the loan, there's a current uh, portion and a, a non-current portion, and important to know which is the uh, non uh, the current portion because that has to be paid within the next 12 months. So, um, yeah, so if you add up, uh, like so, so your balance sheet will give you the total value of all your assets and also uh, the total uh, the value the total amount of the um, the total value of the amounts owed uh, which is your liabilities and um, and also if you have your um, money invested that's your equity so how much money you've put into the business um, it will tell you what that total is um, and also whether you satisfy the solvency tests uh, which we spoke about before there's also return on investment but that's um, a bit more complicated and um, uh, we can come to that a, a, at another time uh, but at this stage uh, it's it, it's important to look at the financial statements and ask your accountants to explain things if you don't understand them um, and and work out uh, how much a product you need to sell on a daily basis uh, so that you can make your deter the profit that you want because if you're focusing on your profit um, your profit is going to come after your, all your expenses so uh, those are um, things that, that you should be focused on and, and keep in mind and look at the balance sheet and especially the solvency test because that will tell you if your business is really um, continuing to go forward or whether you should basically shut up shop and um, go and do something else. So I hope that was um, informative to, um, to everyone, especially lots of people that are starting out uh, new businesses. Um, so um, yeah, look, if you uh, want to know anything more, speak with your accountant. Otherwise, you can give me a call and you can contact me at um, stephen at taxile.co.nz or uh, call me on 021-085-10771 or contact me via uh, Radio Kidnappers. So thank you very much for listening this morning and I wish you a great day. Uh, this is uh, Stephen Diedrichs on Money Talks uh, here on Radio Kidnappers. Goodbye.